What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use an Arduino to control buttons on external devices. Off, on. So the summary of how this circuit works all boils down to this little integrated circuit called an octocoupler. Now the way an octocoupler works is it lets you control two different circuits um, completely electrically isolated from one another because pin one to pin two has an LED in it. And so when this gives off light, pin four to five and six closes a switch that means five and six get connected when this LED is lit up. So by turning an Arduino signal onto pin one and then connecting pin two to ground, so we have an Arduino output here and ground here, we are making five connected to six, basically a continuation of a piece of wire. So we can use this to make a button or some device in the field turn on by using our Arduino signal, even if we have nothing electrically in common across the two. So to really summarize, all we have to do in this circuit is connect an Arduino output pin through a resistor of about 220 ohms because it needs to be about the same that you would use to turn on an LED outside your board. And then pin two will go back to our ground. And then what we're going to do is take pins five and six and we're gonna put these on the two pads of our external button. And to quickly explain how basic buttons work, especially in things like remotes, they're typically just thin pads of metal that when you press down, actually connect two different pieces. So I will try to get the camera to focus, but so actually underneath these pads on a remote, there's usually two different contacts that you need to have be made and joined together. So the outer circle and the inner circle on these buttons are what we're actually joining together when we push any of the buttons in on a remote. Therefore, by touching one of the wires from pin five or six to the inner circle and one of the wires from pin five or six to the outer circle, our octocoupler will complete this circuit when our Arduino tells it to turn on and off. Now a quick and hopefully obvious disclaimer, please do not just tear into random remotes that you really, really need because as part of this project, you may want to solder the leads on if it's something you want to permanently control, but controlling an external device from an Arduino can sometimes make it to where you can't easily go back to the previous state. So I took the rubber pads off of this remote and the whole face of it. It's for a pretty uh, crappy Verizon stream box that came free with my internet, as you'll see a little bit later when we demo it. But please don't just tear into any random thing to proof of concept this, okay? You can essentially control any button on any device, but please don't cut into your blender or household appliance or your only TV remote or something essential to mess around with this project. You may never be able to put things back exactly the way you had them. So I am adding one layer of complexity to my circuit by using one of these three-pronged sound detectors. Um, and the way this works is you provide voltage and ground on two of the pins and then it has a little microphone that detects sound in your area and depending on whether or not it passes a certain threshold, it will turn on or off this digital output pin. And then the resistivity is also adjustable with this little potentiometer here. So you can tweak it up or down if it's too sensitive and you need it to be more or less sensitive. But this way, by putting this in my circuit, I'll be able to turn the button on or off using an audio input. And this is not a piece that standard like comes in a beginner Arduino kit, but I will leave a link to Amazon. You can get like five of these for $5. So this is not a big ticket item that I'm using here, okay? And then really the only other things we have to put in our circuit are of course the octocoupler itself and some of them have a U cut out of them like uh, other integrated circuits we've seen in the past but some of them just have a little dot to indicate where pin one is. So you need to make sure that you're aware of where pin one is on your octocoupler but other than that it's a bunch of very simple connections okay. So I'm going to start by putting a 220 ohm resistor in line with my pin one on the octocoupler. So this is 
uh, to make sure that when we want to turn on the LED inside the octocoupler, we go through a, a resistor first so we don't short this thing by putting too much current on there. Now, I also want to do, um, I want to put an LED in line with this resistor as well so that we can see on the outside world what the internal LED is doing. Okay, so this is just kind of a neat idea that um, I'm using so that we can see visually if our output is on. This could also potentially help with troubleshooting if there's any issues. Okay, so with our octocoupler on the board, the microphone on the board, <clears throat> and then the LED and the resistor in line with pin one of the octocoupler, the only things left to do really are determine where the power and then where the input and output wires need to go. So I'm gonna start by bringing ground over to this first power rail, and then I'm going to put power on the power rail right next to our ground the positive row. Now I'm going to connect pin two of the octocoupler to ground. And now I'm going to connect the ground pin of our microphone's uh, noise detector to ground as well. And now I'm going to connect the positive voltage pin of our noise detector to the positive voltage lead. And now I'm going to connect the leg of the LED, which remember will go through the resistor and then to the octocoupler when the output is on. And I'm going to have that connected to pin two. Although you can use any digital pin on your Arduino that you want. Now I'm going to connect the output from our sound piece into our Arduino onto the pin eight of our Arduino, but again, you can use any digital pin. We'll just use eight as the input. And then the only thing left to do is that you want to put your two wires that you plan on hooking your buttons up to in the field connected to pins five and six of your octocoupler. And now the only thing remaining to do in this basic circuit is uh, take care of the code and get the code uploaded to our Arduino and then actually hook up our octocoupler output pins to our button in the field and see if it's working. All right, so the code for this project or the sketch in the Arduino IDE is incredibly simple. So rather than type it line by line with you guys, I'm just gonna go through the sections. There will also be a link to this in the GitHub description of this video below as well. Um, so you can just grab it if you wanna do the exact same one as me. But basically the only three variables we need to set up in the beginning are whatever pin we're using to control the octocoupler. And so for me, that's gonna be pin two. Whatever pin we are listening to the microphone input from, and that's gonna be pin eight for my build. And then I'm just creating an interval to track the state of our, um, of our uh, uh, push button. So whether it should be on or off, noise state. Now in the setup code, which just runs once at the beginning of the um, kind of boot up of the machine, first time it's powered on, we're gonna set our octocoupler control pin to an output and then our noise pin that we're monitoring to an input. And then I'm just doing this serial.begin so that I can monitor and see if everything's working properly from my uh, from my serial console window to actively monitor the Arduino. And then in the loop section of the build, which is uh, going to run repeatedly over and over and over until we stop it or power it down, I'm just going to start by reading the noise pin, right? So um, these noise gates that I got in particular, there'll be a link to them. They're like five for $5 um, in the description of the video as well. But if the noise state is zero, because they're normally on, so if everything is quiet, you'll be getting a one. And then when noise is made, it'll break that and it'll go to to a zero. So when the noise state is zero for the first time, like you just said something, we're going to turn on the octocoupler and then I'm going to print a one in the window so I know we just turned something on. And then I'm just gonna wait a tenth of a second so that if it's like flickering because you're making noise and then not making noise and then making noise and not making noise, it'll only run once. Um, so I'm just gonna delay a tenth of a second or a hundred milliseconds. And then I'm gonna write it back to low. Uh, so basically that's just one section of turning a button on for a 10th of a second. And then I will print a zero to let me know in the window that it should be back to off. And then last thing I did is I just delayed it by a period of 10 milliseconds. Um, because I just want it to only read a maximum of 100 times per second. If it's reading, trying to read as fast as humanly possible, then you're gonna get a lot of noise and interference. So this is just a time delay buffer so that uh, nothing funky happens, okay? But that's the entire code. So now we just need to um, plug it into our Arduino, upload it, and see if our circuit is working as expected. Okay, so we just powered it up, and this is actually kind of cool. You can see this LED is reacting pretty much directly with my voice. And I don't know if the camera can see this or not, but the microphone sensor 
also has an LED on it that is also mimicking it, but the difference is this could flash really, really fast. The green light is going to flash at increments of one-tenth of a second. Okay, so that verifies that our signal is turning on and off kind of the way we want to, but if I take the two wires, hopefully the camera is picking up that there is a red LED indicator light that is turning on every time our octocoupler turns on. And I'll show in a separate view that this is actively turning on and off the Verizon stream box every time you see that red light blink. On, off, on, off. So to quickly summarize this super fun, really useful, but also surprisingly simple build, we just need an integrated circuit known as an octocoupler. For my specific application using a microphone input, you need a sound detector. And then you're gonna use one digital input and one digital output with your Arduino, one to read the input from the sound sensor and one to control the state of the octocoupler. And then two wires coming off of octocoupler uh, terminals five and six to go out to your button in the field. And then less than 20 lines of code, which again, you can get from the GitHub link in the description of this video below. And just like that, you can quickly control any button on any device anywhere with just a simple Arduino. I hope you guys had fun making this project. I hope you got what you were looking for out of this video. Be sure to let me know in the comments below if you had any questions on what you saw in this video or suggestions for what you'd like to see in the future on the channel. Don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time. Thanks, bye.